Welcome to the Lead Stronger Longer podcast that inspires you to lead your life purposefully, personally and professionally. I'm your host, Stefana Johnson, and today we have an extraordinary guest with us. Joining us is Linda Fisk. She's a multi-award-winning CEO, TEDx speaker, five-time international best-selling author, U.S. Senator for the World Business Angels Investment Forum, a keynote speaker, and a university professor. Linda is dedicated to amplifying and extending the success of other high-caliber business leaders. As the chairwoman of Lead Her Ship Global, Linda leads a vibrant community of unstoppable women who enhance their leadership blueprints and embrace their power to be the best version of themselves, both in work and life. Through Leadership Global, Linda supports and guides ambitious, creative women towards their purpose, mission, and dreams, offering powerful connections, critical support, practical tools, and valuable resources. She empowers women to show up, speak up, and step up in their careers and personal lives. Please join me in welcome, welcoming Linda Fisk to the show. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. Oh, uh, Stefana, what an incredible honor. Thank you so much. It's just, it's really such a privilege to be on your show. And I appreciate the, the connection with you and uh, being able to be a part of this incredible platform. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad. I know that this reaches those that need, need to hear this. So I am sure you're going to share some incredible insight. We always like to start with your favorite quote or mantra. What's yours? My favorite quote is one that was shared with me several years ago, and that is that you cannot grow as a leader by yourself. And that makes good sense from a very practical standpoint. In order to grow as a leader, you need to be surrounded by those that are following you. In order to be a leader, you need to have people that are actually following you, that are being inspired and motivated and driven forward in their personal or professional lives through your leadership. But in a very um, sort of more esoteric kind of meaning of that, really, we grow as leaders by learning from each other. We grow as leaders by having a safe and um, sort of sacred space where we can be transparent, we can be vulnerable, we can admit that there are things we don't know, that we don't have figured out. And as leaders, I think it's important to surround yourself with a community of people that will tell you the truth, that will guide and direct you, that will share their experience and their expertise in a very transparent and vulnerable way. Here, here. I agree wholeheartedly and find what you've created to be that space. And I'm excited to learn what led to your specialization. You've got so many things that you've created in your lifetime and made very big impacts and have done things that, you know, we're all in awe. Five times best selling author. You've got TEDx under your belt. You've got so much that you've done. And here you are now moving into this specialization with Leadership Global. What led to that? So, you know, through my career, I will say I've been extremely lucky to be given extraordinary opportunities, privileges, exclusive platforms and benefits and mentorship and sponsorship along the way. But I also have recognized that that is not true for the majority of women around the world. Oftentimes women can't even, uh, they're legally not able to hold property. They're not able to be educated. They are stripped of decision-making opportunities. They could never create a business. And the more I became aware of the inequalities between the genders around the world where women are often unable to hold a job. They're unable to own property. They're unable to get educated. It really lit a fire in me to say, I have been given such incredible privilege in my life. You know, not only was I educated, I was able to earn a PhD in clinical psychology. 
not only was I able to own property, I actually have three houses. Not only was I able to uh, create a career, I now have a thriving business. So I have been given extraordinary opportunities and privileges that not everyone has access to. And I really felt like I wanted to level the playing field and provide other women with the kinds of extraordinary resources and tools and connections and introductions, access to funding, access to capital, access to media, that otherwise perhaps they would never have the ability to really leverage on their behalf. I have met extraordinary women all around the world who all have a story. They all have something that lights them up. And the women that are driving purpose-driven, mission-driven, vision-based companies are absolutely my inspiration. These are women who not only want to create revenue, they want to change the world. They want to leave the world in a better place than they found it. And I will tell you, it is now my life's mission to ensure that they can reach the same level of, of success that I've enjoyed and that many people in North America have access to. So we have now a global community of about 10,000 women all over the world, uh, many of whom are in North America to include the United States and Canada, but many of whom live outside of North America and you know they're anxious to have access to the same sorts of benefits and privileges that we enjoy and often take for granted every single day. Yeah, that's completely true. I mean, there's so much that you said there, but I, I wanna touch on this, that we do tend to take for granted all the opportunities. And oftentimes that is what uh, inhibits us from actually growing to that next level. And it's clear that you did take advantage of opportunities. And whether they were small or large, you took advantage of them. And and when I say take advantage, you actually did the work. I mean, it's it's not an easy task to go and get a PhD in, in any subject, let alone psychology. So um, that in itself, getting a TEDx talk, putting out one book, let alone five, that takes work. So how, tell us a little bit more about how maybe a crucial early mistake that you made in going forward that in hindsight now, it's a really incredible lesson that you could share with us? Well, I love that question. That's so spot on. But I'd also like to talk about how to overcome issues and problems. And as you said, perhaps mistakes um, that were a stumbling block or you felt perhaps even a impediment to be able to move forward. And my, I think my biggest life lesson happened when I was very young. When I was just a child, I was diagnosed as being clinically shy, which meant I couldn't even hold eye contact with someone. I couldn't speak to them. I couldn't shake their hand. And even though my parents did everything they could to motivate me to be uh, more outgoing and more sociable. I just, I couldn't. And as I grew up, uh, that led to a really significant stuttering problem. And by the time I was in high school, they had dubbed me, my classmates had dubbed me mouse because I was quiet as a mouse. And part of that was feeling very insecure about speaking. And part of that was, I'm sure, a psychological sort of feeling that what I had to say probably wasn't worth struggling to get the words out and forcing everyone else to have to painfully listen to me as I spoke. But the vision that I had for my life involved being able to connect with people. It was founded on the principle of being able to speak and speak eloquently to others. So I had to find a way to overcome this this disability that was no fault of my own, but certainly something that I had to somehow find a path through and over. So when I was in high school and recognized that I really wanted to have a career in marketing and advertising, that meant being able to communicate my ideas. That meant being able to connect with clients and explain my thinking. That meant being able to stand on stages and present 
ideas and campaigns. And I couldn't do any of that. I still couldn't even get through one sentence without horrible stuttering. So in college, I made it a mission of mine to explore all the different opportunities I had to overcome that. And by the time I graduated undergraduate, I had won a national uh, speaking contest. I had been on a stage in front of 5,000 people. I then enrolled into Toastmasters and speaking academies and won multiple awards there. I have now been on stages in front of tens of thousands of people presenting and not one stutter. So at a time where I felt like this was an insurmountable obstacle in my ability to create the life that I envisioned for myself, to be able to create the life that I desperately wanted. And yet there was this obstacle, this roadblock, this disability that I felt like was going to prevent me from being able to literally take hold of this dream that I had for my life. And yet through perseverance, through a lot of grit and a lot of grace, I was able to move beyond my stutter. And I would suggest for everyone that whatever your obstacle is, whatever your roadblock is, whether it's as debilitating as stuttering, or it's you know simply getting access to capital as you're growing and scaling a business, there is a way through. And some of this is really founded on finding people who are going to champion you, who are going to support you through that journey and help you actually um, not only move through it, but provide grace and forgiveness during the times you stumble as you move through it. That's incredible. What, what a story of definitely perseverance, but knowing yourself and making the decision that staying stuck in that wasn't worth what you potentially, what you had to go through, but potentially would achieve if you did push forward through it. So that's a great example of what true leadership is, leading yourself first. Thank you for sharing that. I'm I'm curious, it reminds me of the Amy Mullen story because she was diagnosed and she's a TEDx speaker as well. And uh, the, this diagnosis that often we hear and then that I that identify when we identify ourselves with a diagnosis then we act that way and I think that you are clearly someone who did not identify as that woman or in your own heart and mind you kept a higher vision and I think that that's really incredible and I just knowing you in the few times we've connected that ability to to hold that space for another woman, for another leader who is here to do something powerful and profound. And oftentimes we do get siloed or uh, off track because there is so much and, and sometimes it feels insurmountable, but just deciding to stick with it, decide, being really clear on what's important and then moving forward and then going back to your quote, which is you can't grow by yourself. I think that's right. really wise, excellent wisdom. So what advice would you give to leaders to lead stronger, longer, and stay high performing without losing sight of themselves and their own well-being and without sacrificing relationships? Yeah, what a great question. Um, Stefana, I just have to say you're so well-spoken and the way that you just synthesized my story was so inspiring. So first, thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, I loved the summarization. The, I would say the biggest lesson learned from me is, I would say twofold. One, what I mentioned this earlier in our chat, that you have to surround yourself with a community of people who are going to cheer you on, who are going to tell you the truth in love, who are going to advise you and counsel you and mentor you in those times that you need it. And I have found that developing that trusted and sacred community, almost your personal board of advisors before you actually need them is the best time. So you don't want to wait until you're in a crisis. You're at a crossroads. You have just experienced a, a, a tremendous failure or a misstep. 
before you recognize, God, I don't have anyone around me that I can confide in, that I can receive objective, unbiased guidance from. There's no one around me that can mentor me and coach me through this period. What you really want to do is create those relationships and create that trusted, sacred space of transparency and honesty before that crisis, before that stumble, before that failure. Because let me just be clear, we're all going to stumble. We're all going to fail. We're all going to have setbacks. The difference between those leaders that have that level of resilience to pick themselves up and move on is often predicated on the community that they that they surround themselves with. Are they surrounded with people who remind them of their giftedness, their talent, their mission, their vision on planet Earth? Or are they trying to go alone? Are they trying to make these incredible changes on planet Earth that create this impact in their lives by themselves? So number one, surround yourself with a community of people that serve as almost your personal board of advisors. These are people you respect, you trust, you admire, who may be following down the same road you are. And the second thing I would say is that in all things, it takes a level of grit. It takes a level of mental toughness to be able to stay the course. There's nothing I've ever done in my life that seems like has come easy or quick that has been meaningful. Everything that has been really meaningful in my life has taken time. And so that requires a level of mental toughness and persistence that I really just sort of summarizing grit. You have to have a level of grit to actually overcome the obstacles and the roadblocks and setbacks along the way. And the last bit of advice I would say is have grace with yourself and with others. Because during those really difficult times where you do stumble, you do fall, where you do hit a setback, or you make a bad decision, or you make a big mistake. Listen, we're all going to make big mistakes. We're all going to have big failures. But you have to be able to look yourself in the eye, admit what happened in all of its unvarnished truth, and then say, and I forgive myself and others. This is going to be okay. So I think that it's really just critical that you are able to provide grace for yourself and you're able to provide grace for others. As other people make mistakes, as they fall down, if they you know, somehow don't live up to your expectations and standards, you still have to be, be able to provide grace for them as well. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love that. I mean, everything I heard reminds me of this concept of leading from a place of compassion, but also self-compassion and compassion in this concept where uh, the, the yin yang flow of it in that we are in that accepting place and giving ourselves grace and that loving, nurturing place of compassion for others as well as ourselves. But then also for that, wait a minute, that that we need to get strong here and and stay the course. That is also being compassionate for yourself and your team and your business. And I think that you just uh, synthesized that beautifully in terms of great wisdom for a leader to lead stronger, longer with. What is your go-to book that you might recommend? And if you have more than one, we love books here. So <laughs> I'd love to well, know what you recommend books. Yes. And I love your color-coded books behind you. I mean, it's so organized. It's beautiful. Um, you know, I have a little bit of a story and then I have a recommendation. So Everyone who's close to me knows that faith is absolutely central to everything I do. I am a very, very deeply faithful person who has a very personal relationship with, with my creator. And everything that I do is based on what I believe is part of God's will for my life, part of what I believe is the best and highest use of the gifts and talents that he has given me. Knowing that, knowing that faith is incredibly important to me, and I happen to be a Christian, one of my very best friends uh, is not of faith at all and uh, Jewish. So she was brought up in a Jewish household that really doesn't hold faith as one of her um, guiding lights, if you will. But knowing who I am, she bought me a book 
uh, on Easter that said, uh, the title of it is God is my CEO. And what struck me and still kind of brings me to tears is that she was able to set aside her belief system and she was able to set aside her particular worldview to recognize mine, to honor mine, to respect my beliefs, my faith, my worldview, my perspective, and to honor that with a gift. That gift, uh, God is my CEO, is on my desk. I read it every single day, uh, you know, a passage or two every morning as I get going. And it has been my touchstone as a reminder of why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I'm involved in the conversations I'm a part of every single day, why it is that I, you know, have insane hours and work weekends and, you know, make sacrifices all the time. Why? Because I really feel like I am doing God's purpose on earth for my life. This is my purpose on earth that I believe is God ordained. And so that book is not necessarily the best-selling business book, but it was given as such a precious gift to me that it has a remarkably special place in my heart. I can see why. That's incredible. What a beautiful story. And I haven't heard of that one, so I will look at that. And not to diminish that in any way, but is there any other book that you would say is an absolute must for a leader to read? I, there is a book called Radical Candor that is just brilliant. Uh, Radical Candor is a philosophy that suggests that by being incredibly open and honest with others in a respectful manner, but by telling the truth in a way that forces reckoning, it actually can deepen relationships. It actually can foster richer, deeper conversation and more meaningful connection with others. But most people shy away from it because radical candor forces you to also recognize your own truth and what it is about your worldview or your perspective that maybe puts you at odds with someone else or creates a disconnect between you and someone else, it forces you to recognize first and foremost your truth and then question the other person's perspective or their position based on your vantage point. And it's uh, it's a really, it's a challenging but incredibly dynamic and eye-opening read. And I think an important skill that we all need to develop, redevelop, and make more important in the world of leadership and how we, not just leading our businesses, but our families, because these conversations need to happen. We need to have more self-awareness. So I appreciate very much that you brought that up. I think it's missing in today's culture. And I think uh, it really understanding the nomenclature that gets used where we where too much is shut down when we are having the desire to have a genuine conversation and have understanding, unlike what you have clearly with your friend, where there's a willingness and and to have that connection. I mean, that's true, genuine compassion. That's what I love about what you are doing in your work is that it is compassionate leadership and uh, very powerful. So how can folks get a hold of you? Where's the best place to reach you and find out about the work that you're doing? Uh, that's so kind of you to uh, ask, Stefana. Thank you. Um, I tend to be pretty visible on most social platforms, and people are always welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram. But I will say our website, Lead Hership Global, is a great place to connect, um, to shoot me a note, to let me know if you'd like to have further conversation or you need support or help in some way. Perhaps you need a resource or a tool or an introduction. And I'm more than happy to help anyone around the world that needs a little bit of a boost in some way. If I can be of service, I'd like to. I I don't know why I just got this uh, feeling of 
uh, it's not grief from sadness, but of genuine appreciation that we have people out there like you. I just finished mm-hmm. watching a documentary with my boys, one part of it, and it's it's a depiction of how our leadership over the centuries has diminished the truth and the well-being of humanity. And so that's I'm really raw with that. And then just as knowing what you do and knowing that you are 100% genuine in what you do every day, it gives me hope. And I think oh. that's important is that we as business owners and leaders in whatever capacity, whether you're leading a family or you're leading a 10-person business or a country, we need to get back to the roots of connected to genuine integrity and truth and and seeing a vision that's bigger than just ourselves and uh, some false idea that is that somehow you're going to you know, rule the world with an iron fist or control everyone instead that we can connect and collaborate and create together something so much more beautiful and powerful. And I think that that's my hope and my prayer in this episode and even doing lead stronger longer. That's my hope that we can do that. Thank you so much for being here, Linda. I so appreciate you. And thank you everyone for tuning into the episode uh, of lead stronger longer. If you enjoyed this Today's episode, please take a moment to subscribe and leave a review. Your feedback helps us continue to bring powerful stories and valuable insights from outstanding leaders like Linda. Remember, you have the power to lead with integrity and create a positive, profound impact and achieve your goals without sacrificing your health and relationships. Stay inspired, stay strong, and lead your life and business purposefully. Until next time, I'm Stefana Johnson, encouraging you to lead stronger, longer.